or Tobias Elwood. Good morning to you. Um, Good morning. Always nice to see you on a Saturday morning so early and looking very smart. Um, <laughs> where do centrist conservatives go to if you're not going to align with Jenrick or Badenoch? It's, it's a, a curious position to be in, to say it mildly. Well, uh, let's look at the bigger picture. I mean, firstly, British politics functions best when we have a competent uh, opposition. Mm -hmm. And this lengthy but important selection process uh, that we're now going through uh, is about achieving that objective as a stepping stone to returning to uh, power. So how soon that happens actually depends on how we conduct ourselves. We're now down to those final two candidates. So their professionalism, the resolve, the humility that they display, that we display, and where we pitch ourselves in the political spectrum and how we widen our appeal could all determine how quickly we regroup and regrain the, the trust of the electorate. There's no doubt about it that uh, I would like to have seen greater clarity at this point as to who the MP's preferred candidate was. But, you know, no candidate was ever going to secure 60 uh, 60 votes, a majority, if you like, of the 120 or so, um, rather than we've got this three-way split. And um, what does that suggest to the final two candidates? It means that they need to unite all three of those groups. And I hope that we'll now see a more blended message from the remaining two camps that helps keep that party together and avoids the tribal discord, the disunity that was so disruptive when we were back in government. And you are right to remind those uh, leaders, the last two uh, candidates, and indeed party base as well. Look back at our party's history. Yes, uh, yes. One, one Nation conservatism has been at the heart of our success, securing support well beyond our base from all corners of the country. Disraeli, Baldwin, Churchill, Macmillan, Thatcher, and of course, most uh, uh, recently, David Cameron. He was the one that took us out of the doldrums from 1997. And that is the year that we really do not want to emulate again. If you look across uh, the Atlantic to Canada, I mean, there are, it's a totally different country, a totally different set. I know, I know I'm, try, I am, I'm trying not to bang a, a round peg into a square hole, but there are interesting parallels. The rise of reform, the, the collapse of the Progressive Conservative Party, and then looking ahead, reform and the, and the Conservatives merging together. I mean, Nigel Farage says he'd never consider such a thing. I, 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 I must admit, when I hear politicians saying they never could consider such a thing, I automatically assume they will consider mm. such a thing. Is Could you foresee a Conservative Party splitting it? And I mean, there's always been a problem over Europe historically. I don't think it's ever really been reconciled. If anything, those differences have, have been amplified in recent years. Would a split reconcile anything? Well, I agree. Uh, the danger, the inherent danger is that, is that the light blue and the dark blue from the conservative ranks do split if we don't get this right. Its strength has always been that broad church appeal. People like me feeling as welcome as somebody like Jacob Rees-Mogg. But when you go to one or the other, you're not going to have that blanket of support from the nation. And it is that middle ground that's so critical to win uh, elections in Britain. We saw that. When you go to your extremes, and uh, Jeremy Corbyn illustrated this uh, when he was uh, uh, leading the Labour Party. Only five years ago, he was never going to win. And if we move to the right, we put ourselves into opposition for a very, very long uh, time. So uh, it's up to us, as I stress, this is very much uh, about what the Conservative Party does now. And I do hope that the two candidates remaining will listen carefully to the discussions, the noise, uh, the appeal um, that uh, and the, the the plea from the One Nation side to say, remember our history, look at our success uh, track record, and and base it on that rather than I'm afraid, which is what skewers this entire debate, is saying things to our uh, electorate, the voters, the membership, um, making promises which would not survive contact with reality, rather then actually setting up their stall to appeal to the nation as a whole. I agree with every word, Tobias. Uh, whenever I speak to you, I find myself agreeing with every word and, and then hanging up the conversation, mystified as to, as to how your party is in the situation that it's in. Lovely talking to you. Thank you. I'm going to go straight now to uh, the chair of the Tory reform group, uh, Siobhan Ahrens. Good morning to you, Siobhan. Good morning. Uh, 
what where do where where do one nation Tories coalesce? Who do they coalesce behind if you can't support and I completely understand why you can't support either leadership contender? Well, first of all, I think it's really important that we continue to say loudly and proudly that we are part of the Conservative Party um, and we will continue to be part of the Conservative Party and support it in order to, uh, you know, take the fight to Labour. We are not looking for any type of infighting or division, ultimately. We, the TRG, have taken the decision that we cannot endorse either candidate, but that is not the same as boycotting it or looking for a third, uh, you know, leader. Ultimately, as each uh, member, we will make our vote. We encourage every member to do that. And then, um, you know, look at how we go forward collectively as that broad church in the future. So going back to my question, Siobhan, who do the One Nations coalesce behind then? Each person is going to make their own decision. We've got the two candidates and, uh, you know, everyone has to to decide and, and vote accordingly. OK, the, these the two candidates that, that your own group has said ha, have voiced opinions, you know, far and far and away from Conservative Party values, traditional Conservative Party values. Some, some might say, well, if you have such strong views about the two contenders... What are you doing supporting either of them? Well, you know, the way in which the the whole process is done means that the MPs go through and make the decision. You know that. You don't need me to tell you that. And your vote and your listeners do as well. Um, And, you know, as I say, we are fully and firmly part of the Conservative family. And as we look ahead, as we, you know, know that what the country is looking for from us is a a strong opposition, you know, and a positive future vision, um, that we will continue to do our part to to really try and enforce that and speak for our membership. Okay, I mean, I I, I get that, Siobhan, but as a human being, I wouldn't give my vote to somebody who used rhetoric and focused on issues that were far and away from the party at its best, let alone one nation values we cherish and uphold, as your statement said. I mean, that means you're selling your values down the river, doesn't it? No, not not at all. Um, You know, there are some things that you have control of and there's some things you aren't. Unfortunately, in this case, we are where we are. And what that does mean, though, is then as each member of the Conservative Party will decide, as the TRG, we will ensure that we are speaking for our membership overall, focused on the policies, the vision and the ideas that are one nation and and look to work with the leadership to continue to push that um, as we go forward. You don't don't think you might find that your views, one nation views, would have a a more comfortable and welcoming home with the Lib Dems? (laughs) Well... I'm a Conservative. I don't know enough about the Lib Dems to be able to talk about well, them. The, Li- the Lib Dems are more like the Conservatives that you know than the Conservatives that we know now are. I mean, it's, 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 I'm just thinking maybe you'd be happier there. You know, one nation groups, you know, ca- caring about your, your fellow man. Um, you know, maybe, maybe that's the right place. Maybe a split is something that you, uh, the TRG should be considering. We will continue to to do what we do. Uh, You know, our membership um, is broadly, um, you know, conservative members or conservative supporters. But what does conservative mean anymore, Siobhan? This is is my sort of, the entire sort of thrust of the argument is it used to mean a certain style of, of, you know, one nation conservatism with a a Thatcherite spin to it. And it's been pretty much the key to electoral success for 75 years. And I, and I mean, many One Nation Conservatives don't recognise the modern Conservative Party at all. Dominic Grieve can, you know, can do a much better job than me of explaining how traditional Conservative values seem to have been thrown out the window. So what is a Conservative anymore? I, is it is it you? Are you a Conservative? Is it uh, Robert Jenrick? Because you seem to be a million miles apart. There's a lot of uh, space within the Conservatives for all of the traditions, always has been. Um, You know, we are a broad church. I mean, that's one of the the strengths um, of the Conservative Party. And, 
we will continue to be that. I believe okay. anyone who was at party conference could see that all of the traditions were represented yeah. there. And it's for each of us to ensure that we keep speaking out. We as the TRG will keep speaking out um, on the issues that matter to us and that we know matter to so many of the electorate okay. so that we can continue to shape um, what you know, the vision is for the future. Good luck is all I can say, and I mean that as well, Siobhan. Good luck. Siobhan Aaron's there from the Tory Reform Group National Chair.